I want to say there is a difference between a test dummy and a crash dummy. I mean, if we're talking about a crash test dummy, then yeah, I mean, we're getting a little bit more explicit, a little bit more descriptive in the name, pretty much explaining what it is that we're testing. We're testing for crashes and, uh, and individuals, I guess, resilience, an individual's ability to resist a crash. But in terms of a test dummy or a crash dummy, um, I, I've most often heard it used in the context of, um, what is it, maybe uh, a guinea pig? I mean, because there are those safety standard tests that we've seen that come with uh, with automobiles, with the vehicles, where you got the actual dummies inside of the vehicle and they throw it against the wall. They launch it against the wall at an excessive speed, <laughs> excessive rate of speed. And um, it's just to test, um, I mean, having sensors on the dummy, it's to test the forces that are placed on the dummy in the context of a crash so to, should that kind of crash occur in real life I've also heard it used in the context of uh, of organizations organized companies see I, I don't know like organizations it's just the term that the term that is used to describe any group of individuals to me is so nebulous I, I think in terms of corporate all the time it's corporate or nothing baby it's fucking <laughs> it's corporate or nothing that's some corporate cowboy shit yo it's corporate or nothing baby so I've heard it used in terms of corporations I mean groups of individuals like gangs like criminal gangs where uh where your prospects, your pledges, if you will, those that you are, uh, you could even you could be conscripting into your gang, but those who want to join your gang, depending on their ability, depending on where they land, on the scale of utility, just just how valuable they are and what you could use them for. This is on an individual level, mind you, on an individual level just how valuable they are for certain tasks. You might employ one of them be a, a crash dummy. And for lack of a better term, a crash dummy is uh, like a suicide, a suicide runner, I suppose. A suicide bomber, question mark. They're do or die suicide, pretty much. And um, those are folks you want to send on missions that are high risk, low reward, but significant. So you're, you're not depending on a positive outcome, but the positive outcome is significant. Or else, why would you send a crash dummy, right? You might as well send a, a fucking professional. If it were high risk, low reward, and the outcome was extremely important, regardless of the value you place on the outcome, if regardless of the value you place on the reward from that increased risk, if it were truly important, truly significant, if the livelihood of your organization depended on that outcome then you would send a fucking professional somebody who's gonna somebody who's gonna do what it takes somebody who's gonna who's willing to reach out and pull strings on their own initiative to make it happen why send a fucking crash dummy right I think I believe we can distinguish that from a test dummy from a test dummy hear me out I feel like uh, discourse 
conversations today, uh, arguments and debate occurs at the level of straw men. <laughs> Literally, everybody runs a straw man op. And uh, the game, the theme, the underlying theme and the overarching game is that everybody creates their own little straw man and then places it into battle with the other. And however you form and inform your straw man pretty much dictates how it's going to come out in the battle. And you could necessarily, I guess, if you were, um, I guess if you were very strategic, str strategic, I guess if you were playing strategy, you could form a straw man and inform it to lose with the purpose of getting your opponent or your opposition to expose their hand. To expose their hand, show you just how to show you just how uh, loaded their straw man is, and by loaded I mean armed. To show you just how armed their straw man is. It's a I want to say it's a more professional way. It's a more intellectual way. It could be intellectual. Sometimes it's not, but it's a it's more professional. It's a more professional way of employing crash dummies without actually having to find and then exploit disposable assets. I mean, people. And it's fun. Don't get me wrong. I think that shit is fun. Um, it reminds me of a TV show I used to see when I was younger. I think this was fucking all TV shows that came up in the 90s. Anything that had to do with like monsters, like uh, pocket monsters and, and di digital monsters. I'm sure y'all remember that shit. Fucking the playing card games, all those. You pretty much, um, but in, in those fucking shows, they employ an element of luck. Like, whatever, whatever fucking card you draw is somehow tied to luck and, uh, and, and destiny or whatever the fuck. But luck and destiny can be subordinated and you can create your own. I mean, not necessarily create your own, but you can, you can subordinate luck and destiny. That's why we have dirty luck and, um, I don't know, twisted fate. But yeah, that's why that, that's why we have dirty luck. I'm all too familiar with that. It's still luck, but you're just hedging your bets, I suppose. <clears throat> I didn't even introduce myself. My name is Alex. I'm your intern at Incorporating Associates. This is the Corporate Cowboys podcast. Today's Saturday, by the way, April 10th, 2021. It's the weekend. I'm just um, maintaining an edge, even on the weekend. It's fun to do. Lose yourself for a couple of minutes, get away. It's just a couple of strokes. back and forth a little honing if you need employing crash dummies in corporate almost unheard of almost unheard of like are, are you really gonna find somebody in your ranks in corporate that is disposable to the degree I mean do you pay anybody enough to the degree that you can exploit them in a manner that constitutes a suicide mission? I fucking doubt it. I fucking doubt it. The, compensa the compensation for something like that has got to be off of the charts. And it's got to be contingent on some, on some future interest. 
got to be contingent on some future beneficiary who's going to who's going to collect when that motherfucker or that motherfuckeress cuz it could be male or female when that person is dead and gone somebody else has got to collect on that benefit if if they are even capable of negotiating because this all involves an evaluation of the individual first finding just what they are capable of finding where their abilities lie how much of an asset versus liability they are to the organization in order to employ them in a position that requires <clears throat> devoted sacrifice committed committed sacrifice and typically you only get that from consummate professionals consummate professionals you see i'm talking about corporate now you could apply the label consummate professionals to motherfuckers on the street to those uh organized organized criminal enterprises <clears throat> But let's be real. You can make a con you can make a consummate professional out of somebody for a suicide mission with a twenty sack. <laughs> with a twenty sack of dope. <laughs> That's all you need, man. Fuck. R.I.P. Matt Garcia, right? And in that context, yeah, that's a fucking consummate professional. You get what you pay for, right? But forget forget the street for a second. Forget the street politics for a second. I'm talking corporate. In corporate, it's a lot more efficient. Obviously, it's a lot more efficient to work smarter. It doesn't mean you won't get tired. But working smarter allows you to employ test dummies and they don't they don't have to be disposable they could be reusable so long as the message you're using hold on so long as the message you're using the message you're sending you're crafting is formulated in a way it's formed and informed in a way to be revelational to be more revealing of other people's intent not meant to attack very rarely do you want to actually be on attack mode that requires a lot more energy you're necessarily working a lot harder because you've exhausted all means of working smarter a test dummy works smarter a test dummy why because they don't die they learn and yeah I, I I necessarily mean employing a test dummy I'm sure a great majority of our listeners have at one point in time been a test dummy test dummy I don't mean a fucking guinea pig I don't mean taking uh, experimental drugs or experimental injections or some shit and then finding out what it does to you later. No, 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 not at all. I mean a test dummy where you're informed or you inform a message. Hold on. <clears throat> where you are informed, right? Because you will be the carrier of this message. You're, you're the fucking messenger. Or you form a message. And then you... How do you, how do I how do I say it? You introduce it, yeah. Introduction. Cause I I was gonna say uh, you. Uh, hold on. I, what was I gonna say? I was gonna say you propose it, but it's not even it's not even really a proposal. You introduce it into the dialogue. You introduce it into the conversation. You introduce it into the interaction. In order to find how armed how apprehensive 
your prospective opposition is. And I say prospective opposition because they might not even be opposition. You can necessarily use test dummies. A test dummy. You can employ a test dummy against a fellow coworker. And it doesn't mean that you're hurting them. Now again, I need you to realize that the term test dummy is overgeneralized, overgeneralized. The, te the idea of a test dummy is just that, an idea, an idea. It doesn't have to be a person. In your mind, what you're creating is a straw man. That's the test dummy <laughs> or a straw person. You're creating a straw bitch. <laughs> You're creating a straw bitch and how you inform or how you inform and or inform your straw bitch could potentially pull somebody else's bitch card. You feel me? So just because they're a bitch doesn't mean that they're weak. They're just revelational. It could be bait. You could set a bitch out there for bait. And if you get a nibble, it tells you something. If you get a bite, it tells you something. That's all a straw man does. A straw man takes the hits that you don't have to. And this happens on a level where you're not risking actual harm. You're not risking injury to yourself. You're not risking injury to your organization. You're not risking injury to your organizational ties between yourself and associates. Obviously, it requires you have a fucking brain. So, your straw man has some defense. <laughs> you have to advocate for your fucking straw man. Even a little bit. But the shit has gotta be sincere. Why? Because every test is sincere. Every test, probably except for shit tests, but that's another, I mean, shit tests might be the only exception, but still, some people employ shit tests on a very sincere level. It's contextual. But tests in, the, in themselves are sincere, otherwise, why, why would you employ them? Why even test? Why... Why address the risk and benefit analysis? Why, why, uh, why even attempt? Yeah, there you go. Why attempt the reward given the risks if the tests aren't sincere? If the tests were not sincere, if the tests are not sincere, See, I'm, I'm working on whether or not I should be using contractions in my daily speech. <clears throat> I'm working. I am working. I am working on whether or not I am deciding. I am deciding on whether or not I should be using contractions in my daily speech. Some days it's on. Some days it's off. I suppose it all matters, uh, again, on context. In front of uh, certain individuals, contractions are cool. In front of others, they might be viewed as uh, colloquial, shall we say, or not professional. And still in others, I mean, contractions just gets the message across that much faster. But that was it I, that's just the thought I was having a little earlier not bad for a Saturday I like running little thought experiments like that little trains of thought I can go down and I can assess my uh, my own logic having spoken with others think it's good talking out loud even if it's with yourself I already know this is recorded I'm doing it on purpose I already know 
it'll be published. I know now, I know for now, it'll be public domain, right? It'll be on the public domain. It'll be accessibly, it'll be accessible by the public. There you go. <clears throat> That's a better one. It'll be accessible by the public. And it'll be kept forever on the digital record. And that's all that matters. If somebody comes across this, it's just an idea. It's just a straw man. And you saw it. Formed in the beginning and informed with intent. You already know where this is headed, man. That's some fucking corporate cowboy shit.